Hello everyone and welcome to the Topical Hour. Marvel's Spider-Man 2 has a lot of problems. I'll acknowledge that right off the bat, but I think the game has some problems that people are ignoring and some problems that people are making up. Right off the bat, we'll start with story problems. I think the story of this game is weaker, but its character development is stronger. I've seen that a lot of people think that Miles has nothing to do in this game, and I fully agree. I think until Pete gets the symbiote suit, or maybe until the lizard fight, Miles should be with him a lot more. The whole idea of this game is based on the two Spider-Men working together, and we only get that for maybe a sixth of the game. All the time, they'll make excuses. Peter's not feeling well. Miles has to finish his essay. Peter's too tired. Miles has to finish his essay. Peter wants to work alone. Miles has to finish his essay. It just gets annoying after a while, when there's typically no reason for them to be apart. I don't even think we get a paired stealth section for the two, which is just strange. They also have the fewest takedown animations, which again, the entire focus of this game should be on these two. I guess part of the problem is Martin Lee, which pulls Miles away for a lot of the game, and I'm actually quite torn on Lee. I think he was actually kind of wasted in the first game. I didn't feel a huge emotional connection with him, and it felt like he was shafted for Octavius. So to see his story so continued in this game, I really like it, especially because we get a much better boss fight. This is your reminder to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you. That said, although Lee's character is made better by being in this game, Miles is made worse. It makes him suddenly bloodthirsty for revenge, even though he barely brought up his dad in his own game, and it sucked up all his attention for pretty much no reason. I previously chalked this up to Lee being freed, being used as an excuse to finally deal with him permanently. But the more I think about it, the more out of character it feels for Miles. He spent almost the entirety of his own game convincing his best friend to not take revenge on the people that killed her only family. Another problem with Miles, he has like no relation to any of Peter's characters. Like, he only talks to Harry twice in the entire game, only once in person. He doesn't meet Craven until he's captured and then the Lee boss fight. He never even meets non-lizard Doc Connors or Norman Osborn. The only character who I didn't mind his relationship with was MJ. I felt that they were done pretty well. But then there's Peter, who barely speaks to Black Cat a single time, a character that he already knows, and he only speaks to Genki in side missions or in the intro. He never even speaks to Mysterio from my memory. It just feels too... separate. But back to Miles himself. Himself, I'm torn on his character. I wanted to feel compelled for him as he fought Lee, but I couldn't because it felt forced. Again, it would all be different if this was a threat in Miles' game, but it isn't. But speaking of characters, we can talk about someone who pretty much everyone has a problem with. Harry. Or Venom. I kind of agree with this, but I kind of don't. Harry as a character is actually fine. One of the biggest problems with Harry in the Raimi movies is that he and Peter pretty much never felt like friends aside from the first half hour of the first movie. In this game, you pretty fully buy into them being friends for years, and the whole story hinges on them not seeing each other for years, so it's easy to buy into the long lost friend thing anyway. Even when Harry is in the Agent Venom getup, he's a pretty likable guy, and it makes it kind of sad watching Peter being simply indifferent towards his best pal. And then all of it culminates in Harry losing control and free will to be bonded with the symbiote. Harry acts on screen as Venom for maybe an eighth of the game. Keep in mind, that's on screen. I think you fix all of the problems with Venom with more fights and screen time that enhance his character. Instead of fighting Kraven in Times Square, it should have been Miles to give the two more time to interact. Obviously Venom wins, then the two Spider-Men the game is named after chase him down in a long chase just like the promo art suggested. And then Kraven intervenes, knocks the two Spider-Men out, we switch back to Venom, kill Kraven, and go off. There shouldn't have been one boss fight with Venom. Miles didn't get enough time with him, and Peter really shouldn't be going toe-to-toe -to -toe with him until the end. This solves all three problems and barely changes the story other than deepening the characters. Besides, if you have Venom beat Miles in his first fight, it will give the story an excuse to have Miles and Peter need to fight Venom at the end. But without changing the game, what we'd have just isn't great. It'd be different if Harry turned into some kind of sentient villain, but he turns into Venom. I get it, right? We want to do a symbiote story and have Peter regress until he's hurting his loved ones and even Miles' mom. And I get that we want to involve Harry and kind of turn him into a villain the easy way. But if you ask me, we should have saved millions of dollars by simply not making this situation Avengers level. No more heal the world, no more gooing up the city, and we get a more grounded story. Venom should be trying to punish Peter for seemingly trying to kill Harry by hoarding the suit. I believe Venom is at its best when it twists the view of its hosts and not when it flat out just makes stuff up for its own goals, like the heal the world garbage. Then there's the other villain, Kraven. Normally I'd argue that it's okay to kind of sacrifice the integrity of one villain to benefit the other. 
in this case, both of the villains kind of suffer because of the other one. If Craven was the main villain, you could have him be a solo powerful hunter, maybe have a few of his family members for a few extra boss fights, but he wouldn't have an army because it would just be him. That would keep him looking really cool and you'd get the cronies by having Venom build up an army and you'd still have the comic accurate stuff for Craven. But he's not the main antagonist, Venom is, and we've already established why that doesn't work. So you sacrifice both Craven's and Venom's comic accuracy because neither of them function as good main antagonists for this game specifically, with Craven getting most of the runtime, but Venom still being the emotional focus. However, back to the protagonists, Peter is good, I think. I mean, he doesn't do anything wrong, but what else is there for him? I think a big problem with Peter, and to some extent Miles, is that the emotional finale of this game for most people was the Peter boss fight. And it was a great emotional payoff, don't get me wrong. You see Peter going through it, kind of trying to justify his actions in any way he can. In the beginning, he admonishes Miles, claiming that he's in the way and is just a kid. He then later kind of pleads with him, asking, why are you doing this? It's a great representation of what addiction can do to someone, and as an adaptation of the black suit arc, it's a very good one. But then the game just keeps going, and we start not to care as the story continues because for all purposes, Miles stopped Lee without killing him and Peter got the suit off. Even Craven was defeated at some point, even if not permanently. So at this point, the story kind of just continues on for no reason. But back to Peter himself, I saw some people asking what the stakes of this boss fight really were, as Miles says repeatedly that he understands Peter's hurting and people would ask, what's Peter's conflict? And I ask, did we play the same series? Peter is quite clearly still reeling after the first game with the death of May and the loss of his mentor. Now, yes, it's been around two years, but the symbiote suit isn't out for him. He sees it as a way to solve all of his old problems, which is reigniting the pain of his losses, and it doesn't help that the suit itself is exacerbating his emotions already. Look, there's a lot of problems in this game, but I personally don't believe Peter's emotional journey is one of them. But now moving on to the problems with the gameplay, which of course there are a lot. If you ask me, the easiest way to extend the content of this game by an hour or two is more combat gauntlets and challenges. In the first game, there were Sable guys, street criminals and demons, each of which had a bunch of bases around the city, which would spawn enemies for round-based combat. It was fun, it was a great way to experiment with different mechanics and combos. What we have in this game is symbiote hives and hunter blinds. We also have the little fire guys from the flame cult, but I don't really count them because you kind of only see them in crime, so you don't really get bases for those guys. You also sometimes see them in mysteriums, but again, I don't really count that. The symbiote hives and hunter blinds are actually not very fun at all. The hunter blinds don't usually have enough enemies for it to be a challenge, nor for you to hit your stride in combat. And the big blinds, of which there are only like three or four, are a little bit too stealth oriented, and even so, still don't have enough enemies to be a genuine challenge. In the first game, there was always a genuine chance that you didn't make it out of a camp alive if you weren't focusing. I think you'd actually have to fall asleep to die at Hunter Blinds, genuinely. And then there's the symbiote nests. I think the reason that I don't like these is that A, there's a timer involved, which has never really been my preference. I think you should just have to beat all of them. And B, I just don't really like the symbiote enemies. There's like too many types, and they're all a bit stupid. I like the big gray guys, I like the yellow ones, and I like the red ones. The purple ones are basically a combination of the red and green ones, and the green ones just suck in general. I don't mind having to parry an enemy to defeat it, but for some reason if you parry it with anti-venom tendrils, you won't counterattack properly. And at this point, I just get really irritated fighting them in general. And I do think they should try to dodge your attacks, but there are times where I clearly hit them and they just won't take damage unless I parry them, and I don't like that. It feels like the game is cheating me. But again, the nests themselves are boring. You'll only fail them when something stupid happens, like in a Soulsborne boss fight. I kinda give the nests a pass because I think my reasons for disliking them are specific to me. To fix all of my problems with the gameplay, open world emptiness slightly included, we should have brought back a couple of bases for the underground from which you get rare tech parts. Miles should be the only one who can do them because of their weapon's reaction to Venom, and if you beat them, you get the variants for the underground Miles suit after unlocking it. And then for Peter, it's pretty simple. Either bring back Tombstone's drug from that side mission and have some dude gang using the drugs to give the bases real challenge and offer hero tokens, or have the Magia crew try to make a comeback. Either way, you could give Peter a snazzy suit as a costume because it kind of works for both gangs, at least for comic book Tombstone. In this case, we establish ties to the DLC of the first game and Miles Morales to keep the world feeling interconnected, and it provides more challenges specific to each Spider-Man. 
I don't typically like including suggestions for games like these as they've already been released and the suggestions have no chance of being implemented at all, but I thought it'd be fun to consider these. As it stands, this game is still very good. I'll never call it a bad game, but wow, it kinda came up short. Obviously, in light of all the Insomniac leaks, I tried not to poke my nose in them, but still ended up seeing a couple. And it looks like they have big plans for this game's post-game content, which is good so long as it enhances the story and or gameplay. As for the number rating, I think I'll give it something like an 8 or an 8.5. I think I lean towards an 8. As a bit of an epilogue to this video, I guess, if you'll bear with me, I want to talk about the music in this game and the Scream boss fight. First off, the music in this game, while not as highlighted as in the last two, is really good, specifically during the Scream boss fight and the Peter boss fight. It's not often that I notice a track on my first run in a video game, but I did for both of these tracks, and they're absolutely brilliant. But as for the Scream boss fight as a mission, I was torn on it for a while, but I really like it now. First off, as a surprise in the game, it's a brilliant treat to have Scream at all, even if it's only Scream by name and visual look. But as for the fight on my first go, I thought it was kind of funny in a secondhand embarrassment way that MJ was bringing up things like bills, jobs, and mortgages, but that's the entire point. You, like Peter, are supposed to feel uncomfortable with MJ saying this stuff, as if she's airing dirty laundry out for everyone to hear. It's stuff they'd never say out loud, but stuff that's always bothered them internally, or at least bothered MJ. And to have Scream belted out so disrespectfully, doing whatever it can to hurt Peter, it's actually quite good writing in my opinion. And having bills to pay is always a problem that Spider-Man's had, so I'm glad that it was called upon here. Anyway, if you enjoyed, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss another one. Or not, that's fine. Play nice, people.